What's up everyone, Jeff with Polar Pro, and today I'm gonna show you how different shutter speeds affect video. We've got a 350 mile route planned through Oregon. We should see some pretty cool waterfalls, rivers, and coastlines, so let's get started. This looks like a good spot for our first comparison. So before we shoot the comparison, let's go over a little bit of theory. There's something called the 180 degree rule of shutter, which is basically just a standardization that the motion film industry uses. So to mimic motion the same way that your eye perceives it in real life, the shutter speed should be set to double your frame rate. When you hear people talk about cinematic shutter speeds, this is the principle that they're referring to. So let's illustrate this. So to illustrate this, I'm gonna record one clip at 1 800th of a shutter speed, which is very high, and then also another one at 1 50th of a shutter speed, which is double my frame rate. So you can see that the movement of the water at 1 800th shutter speed just looks a little bit strange. Whereas at 1 50th, it looks a lot smoother, which is because it's how we naturally perceive this with our eyes, and also why they use it in feature films. All right, so let's head west and see if we can find an epic coastline to shoot. So we've got a pretty cool coastline shot set up right here. But before we run the comparison, I wanna go over how to reduce shutter speeds without affecting or sacrificing your depth of field or aperture. So right now we're shooting at 24 frames per second. The ISO is at 800 because we're shooting in log and it's locked there. And the aperture is at 5.6. So we're getting a decent depth of field in the background and the shutter speed's all the way up at 1 2,000th. So if I want to lower shutter speed to 1 50th to mimic that natural perceived motion, my image is gonna be completely overexposed unless I close down aperture, it's like T22, and that's gonna completely change my depth of field. So luckily there's another way to reduce light and that is with an ND filter. So you can leave your aperture completely unchanged, throw this in front of the camera, and reduce shutter speed to 1 50th without sacrificing your depth of field. So let's go run this comparison. So you can see at the 1 2,000th shutter speed, the movement of the water just looks a little bit odd. It almost looks jittery. Whereas at 1 50th, the water looks a lot smoother and more natural. Still got 185 miles to go, so let's go see if we can find an epic waterfall and explain why lower shutter speeds look more natural. Wow, that was a long but very scenic drive. So now let's talk about why lower shutter speeds look more natural. So videos are essentially just a bunch of images or frames that are played back sequentially. Now when the shutter speed's very high, all of the motion in each frame is frozen. So you can't really see any motion blur. But when you slow down the shutter speed to like 1 50th or 1 60th, each frame's gonna have a slight blur motion and our eyes actually perceive motion similarly where it's kind of blurred. Take your hand and wave it in front of your face and you can see that it actually blurs the motion. And that's why we shoot at the lower shutter speeds because it mimics the same way that our eyes perceive motion in real life. Let's go head up to the waterfall and run a couple comparisons. Okay, so we're gonna run a comparison here. We're gonna shoot one section at 1 800th and then the next one at 1 50th. 
So this is the 1800. You can see that the water is looking a little bit strange and a little bit jittery, but the 150th, the water looks a lot more smooth and just similar to the way that I'm seeing it right now in person. Woo! 350 miles down. I hope you guys had just as much fun watching as I did filming this one. If you're not already subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we continue our adventure up here in Oregon and next week we'll show you how to scout for long exposure locations. So I will see you then.